Hello and welcome to this lesson on soundproofing and how to wire your home recording studio. And this one's going to be specifically focusing on ground loops and electrical grounding. So I know it's kind of nerdy, but some of you might find this really fascinating and it's an extremely important part of designing and building your home recording studio. So I highly recommend checking this video out. I will also say that there's another video I made on electrical wiring for your home recording studio, and I would definitely check that out. I'll have the little link above me here or an also one in the description that you can check out. Before we jump into this lesson, I do want to say I have a free resource for you. This is my free soundproofing workshop. It is going to be 45 minutes of in-depth teaching going over exactly what you need to know to successfully build your soundproof home recording studio. To check that out, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's jump into this lesson on how to avoid ground loops in your home recording studio. All right, the first thing we're gonna talk about is proper home recording studio grounding. And to do that, we need to talk about and learn what grounding is to begin with. So grounding essentially is the third prong in the three prongs that you will see in most electronics these days. And that third prong is the ground. And the ground will go through every electrical wire and it will eventually go down to the earth, either through the electrical panel at your street where there's a ground by the electric company that will send the excess electricity to the, to the earth or by just naturally grounding somewhere throughout your building. If, if the wires ever touch metal or if electronics touch metal and then that goes in the ground, it'll create a ground as well. And grounding is important because any excess electricity that may come from a surge or a voltage discrepancy between equipment, meaning an excess of electrons are flowing through that wire, it needs to go somewhere and the safest place is right back into the earth, hence the name grounding, rather than potentially flowing into your body or anything like that, which could lead to a uh, death. So according to Philip Newell, who wrote Home Recording Studio Design, uh, the basic idea with grounding is that with all of our audio equipment, we want it to have its own individual ground that is not connected to other grounds in the system. So the best way to do this is to have the grounds going directly to the electrical panel, not intertwined with every other electronic device in your studio, your lights, or other things in your house like washing machines, uh, TVs, electronics, things like that. If it's all interconnected, then you're creating what he says is a lot of impedance or resistance in the system, which will cause harmonics and create problems down the road. So you want to have your audio dedicated on its own circuit, its own ground that goes to the electrical panel. And here's just a quick diagram that shows you the incorrect way to ground your studio equipment. So this shows, you know, the electricity coming from the electrical panel, it's going into multiple outlets that are usually in a loop around the room. And we even have a branch off to a lamp in this diagram. And you could have tons of branches and all the grounds are gonna be interconnected and then all coming back to that single line back to the electrical panel. And this is a bad way to wire your studio. Now, if you look at this diagram, it shows the correct way, which is to have individual lines that go directly back to your electrical panel. So let's say you had a four gang outlet, let's say in the front of your room, which is what I have in my studio. And that all, all my audio plugs into that four gang outlet. And like in this diagram, we actually have two outlets that then go to individually to two separate breakers on the panel. But that's the goal. We wanna have our audio dedicated to its own breaker in the electrical panel. Uh, and I'll talk more about that later. So how do we avoid ground loops? Now, if you did what I said before, that will get you a long ways toward, toward avoiding ground loops. But first to understand how to avoid ground loops, let's define what a ground loop is. So ground loops essentially happen when the individual grounds of separate, in this case, audio units are then connected to the grounds of external devices or systems. And those interconnection of the grounds from the audio unit and other, the grounds of other electrical devices can create a loop, which then could lead to you know 60 or 50 hertz hum, depending on your electrical system. So to understand this a little bit better, we can see a, a diagram here of a ground loop that I've diagrammed out, where it shows that you know our audio unit, for, in this case, let's look at the right-hand side, where you have a tube mic that's plugged into the wall, because the tube mic has its own little, uh, tube amplifier and then 
the audio chain from that tube mic is then running to a separate uh, audio input on the console or the interface, which is then plugged into another outlet. And those outlets are now connected in a loop. So the ground is going into the electrical outlet and then the ground of the audio wire is then going into another electrical outlet through the interface. And then those two outlets are connected through the ground of the wire connecting the outlets. And that's creating the loop, which could cause the hum and the noise in your audio line. So that explains exactly what's happening with the ground loop. So how do we avoid this? Now, Roger Weiss, who wrote Home Recording Studio, Build It Like the Pro Pros, has a few ideas. He first says, well, break the loop. And we'll talk a little bit about how to break the loop in the next section. But he also mentions a couple other things that I think are interesting. One is he recommends using a isolation transformer, which can then isolate the ground loop and, and actually cut off that 50 to 60 hertz hum that could be created. So that's a way to fix a problem that you already have. But in this video, I'm trying to teach you how to avoid even having these problems to begin with. So the other thing he mentions is using a um, hospital grade electrical system using isolated receptacles and a star grounding system. Now I'm not going to go deep into that, but I did want to mention it because it's something you could do some research on and then also just mention it to your electrician and say, Hey, this is a system that will give us the type of grounding that we need for audio. So there's no ground loops and no noise. And so that's something you could talk about with your electrician, which leads me to my other point, which is all of this should be run by an electrician. Unless you are extremely knowledgeable and an electrician yourself, it's best to use what I'm teaching you as a way to communicate with your electrician, not to know how to do all this stuff yourself. Now, another concept that I think is really important and worth mentioning is something called the zero loop area. And the zero loop area actually was coined by uh, an electrical engineer named Neil Muncy, who also uh, was extremely prevalent in designing consoles and tape machines uh, back in the day. So he is a, a great mind and a great uh, source of information. And he came up with this idea of the zero loop uh, system. And then J.H. Brandt, who I've mentioned before on the channel, who's also a well-known studio designer, has a paper based off of one of Neil Munsey's papers. So I'm going to talk about that and, and summarize it as well in this video. So the zero loop area uh, essentially takes the problem that we had before in the diagram I showed you, where we've got these two loops that I've shown here, where things are plugged into the wall outlets, and then the audio cables are plugged into the console or the interface, which is then plugged into a different wall outlet, which then creates two different loops in this diagram, which is bad. We don't want that. So for the zero loop, uh, system, what we want to do is this next diagram where we can see that everything is plugged into a single outlet or a four gang or two four gangs, which are then directly run to the electrical panel. So we don't have this loop system anymore. And then everything is plugged into those outlets. And then all the audio is then plugged into the console or the interface, which is also plugged into those outlets. So everything's running through a single system. And we've essentially destroyed the loops, hence the name zero loop. So there's no longer the physical loop of the wiring running through the walls and then back into the console. If you're in a live room, for example, the same idea applies. You wouldn't want to plug in audio and microphones into multiple different outlets all over the room and then have everything interface through another part of the room there. So everything should come through a single point of entry in the live room if, if that's the case. So live room or control room, you can kind of look at it the same way. The concept stays the same. So in conclusion, we've covered what grounding is, we've covered what ground loops are, and we've talked about some ways to minimize or completely eliminate ground loops in your studio design. So when I'm working with my clients and thinking through ways to get their electrical system in place, I'm always thinking about these aspects. And the zero loop system is, is my favorite because it's a, a simplified way of thinking through how to avoid ground loops. And the main takeaway I would say is what Philip Newell says in his book, which is that we're trying to create the path of least resistance for the ground. So we're always trying to go directly back to that main supply electrical panel and trying to avoid all the other electrical branches in our home or in our dedicated recording studio space. So the more we can have our audio on its own dedicated outlet or set of outlets that then goes to its own dedicated spot on the electrical panel, the better we're going to be at having clean and focused electrical in our home recording studio.
If you have found this helpful, hopefully helpful, hopefully not too uh, mind-bending and, and confusing, uh, then check out my free soundproofing workshop. This is where I go in-depth and go through all the aspects of how to build your home recording studio in a 45-minute workshop. To check that out, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That is soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all next week with more information on soundproofing and room acoustics. Thank you.